This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas, and today I want to talk to you about tilt stands. Tilt stands are really popular, and using it properly is a topic that keeps coming up. It came up quite a bit this fall when I did a seminar on using your river. Tilt stands are really useful when you're using your river. Now, here I am over at the stand. I thought I'd start by showing you a properly assembled tilt stand and if I loosen these two knobs then the stand will tilt and when it's assembled correctly it tilts downward. These are tilting downward. They were up and now they're down and I hope you can see that clearly. Also when it's assembled correctly these two braces which go in the back are put in so that they will hold the lid of your metal machine box. They're also put in through the legs and the frame and they hold everything together. Now I'm going to take this apart and show you how to put it together. Here are the big pieces of the tilt stand. It's all in pieces on my floor. And the way I like to put it together is put it on its back. So these two brackets that hold the legs are sticking up. And then I get a leg and try to figure out which way it goes. Now, the legs don't go like that. They don't bend toward the end. They bend toward the side. They go like that. But you have to check the rubber pad. You want the rubber pad to be flat when it goes down. So if, for instance, I were to put this one here, then it would have to rest on the point of the pad and it wouldn't work right. It wouldn't give the support that you want. So it goes like this and you look at it and you can see that when this is upside down, this rubber pad will be flat. And then you get the next one and hold it in position and yeah, that one's the right way. So it goes like that. And then the other two, hold it so it goes outward. And if you hold it outward and examine the top, oh, that looks good. I guess that was just random luck because I can pick it up and put it the wrong way just as easily as I could pick it up the right way. There were two. And then this one's going to go here. So now we have the bare bones of our tilt stand, but upside down. So what I do is I grab the tilt stand here, and I flip it over, and I double check the feet at the bottom of the legs to make sure they're flat. And if one of them is not flat, I can still slip it right out and fix it. There's another thing I need to check. Once I check my feet, I need to check the top. The top needs to sag downward toward me when it is tilted. And it is sagging downward towards me. If, on the other hand, I had it around this way, and it was sagging away from me, then I would put the braces in the wrong place because the braces go in the back. So let me turn it around so it's tilting downward. It's tilting downward as if the machine would slip off into my lap. God forbid. The next thing you do is put the brackets on that hold it together. And this long bolt goes through this hole. And there's a hole inside on this smaller square piece of metal. And it goes through, through both layers in the back. And both layers in the front. Let me just jiggle it and get it where it goes. There we go, just like that. And then it's got a wing nut to put it on. Now some tilt stands are a little different. They might have a little different wing nut. It might be the kind of nut that you have to tighten with a, a wrench. But it's pretty much the same idea. And then here's the other one. Wiggle it through the back leg, wiggle it through the front leg, and put the wing nut on. A 
last step is to put these wheels, these handles on from underneath and I'm just under there and turning them on. Just like that. Now, with these loosened, I can pull this flat and then tighten them. Or if I want it tilted, I can loosen these and pull this down into the tilted position. Now let's talk about putting a machine on here. So now I want to put a machine on here. And I want to put it on river clamps. Of course you can clamp a machine on here without it tilting, but if you're going to use river clamps because you want to use your river, then get them ready. But you have to have a pair of these. I've been calling these tilt safe brackets. This is a keeper for your river clamp so that it does not fall off the stand and land that machine on the floor or in your lap. Look. When that's tilted, it falls right off. And sure, you could tighten it a whole lot, but this is much more secure. What you do is you put this on, put your river clap on, and you put this on so that this little folded over part here is in the front. Put your river clamp on so that it slides in. Now, the newer tilt stands come with these safety brackets, but the older ones didn't always, and a lot of these tilt stands have been around a while and they've had several owners and they no longer have all their pieces, but I have really good news for you. Veronica Soltichek in Chicago, my friend Ronnie, has these being manufactured, so you can obtain them, and I'll put the information so you can get a pair in my uh, description below the YouTube. Now, these guys are the ones that came with this tilt stand. They're not as nice as the Ronnie clamps. I've got a pair of hers, and hers have a nice black coating. I think they've been painted. Mine are getting a little old and, and tarnished. In fact, my husband cleaned one of my old pairs and plated it, and it didn't turn out fabulous, but it'll stop tarnishing. So, anyway, you put it in like this, and I haven't even tightened that clamp, and it's not falling off. So I need to do that for both clamps. On both sides. And then I'm going to sort of estimate how far over to install the clamp, and then I'll, then I'll tighten it up and I tighten it up right over that tilt safe safety keeper. Um, same thing on the other side, I think about there. I'm not tightening it all the way because these will have to be moved when we lift the machine on. Now, you need two things at the point. this point. You need your machine with no accessories and you need a buddy. If you're not super strong, it would be nice if you had a strong buddy. So I'm going to go get my ever-patient assistant and show you how to put your machine on. All right, so I went and got John to help me with this because this is a much safer process with two people. And I have my great big bulky machine. Okay, so John's here. And we've got the machine, and we've taken the antenna off, the carriage off. It's just the bed, because this is the easiest way to get it on. And what we're going to do, let's turn it over so it's on camera. We're going to get these clips, these brackets on the bottom of the machine go over these buttons on the tilt stand clamps. So we're going to turn it over and we're going to put it on there. And with him to help me, we can fiddle with it a little bit until we get it right. Do you want to go first or you want me to just hold it while you slide in? So 
So John's lining up one end, well, and I'm holding the other end. Okay. Is it in? Oh, I think so. Okay, we can tighten it later, and then there we go. He's tightening the little brown button, and then over here, can does this line up? I just guessed on where to put the clamp. So don't be surprised if one of you needs to hold the machine a little while off. while the clamp gets moved into the proper position. You could, of course, measure, but I didn't do that. Okay, and John is putting it on, and there's a little thumb screw under there, a little knurled screw that you can turn and tighten it up. And right now, the machine is flat. So John helped me position the machine and put these two clamps here where they need to go to line up with the brackets on the bottom of the machine bed. And then we tighten this and we tighten this. There's this wheel to turn here to tighten these down. Now, I'm hoping that you can see that right now the machine is tilted forward. If it didn't have these keepers and if it wasn't tightened up, it would slide right down into my lap. And I'm sitting in a chair in front of the machine. Now with the, the stand tilted downward, the machine is flat. So the machine is in an ideal position for many things that we like to do with a flat machine, especially garter bar work. But if we want to do ribbing, we're going to tilt it up. So I'm going to loosen these two knobs underneath. Yours might have angle brackets that you loosen, or it might have the big triangular knobs you loosen. When I loosen it, I can tilt it forward or I can tilt it back. So I'm tilting it back because I want to show you how to add a river. And my husband went off to do what he was doing, and I can actually put the river on all by myself. It's pretty easy. So this is now tilted up, and what's making it tilt is that the river brackets are at an angle. It's pointing up at the sky, but they're still safely in the safety clips. So I call them the tilt safes because that machine's not going to go anywhere. It's going to be safe even if your screw on your clamps comes a little bit loose. So now we're in position and we're ready to hang a river on this. Now I'm sitting in front of the machine and the river is in my lap and it's ready to hang. Now make sure you've got your end brackets installed on each end of the river. Now this little slot right here already has this little setting bracket installed. I leave those on all the time. And this end prong right here is going to go in there. So I tilt it up, hold this around the right way, and put it in. Just slide it in, and then go to the other end and slide the other one in. And now the river is just hanging here, and I have to do a couple more things to get it ready to use. I happen to have river covers on it. I do leave them on a lot, but see, that really is a river in there. And I have the brackets all the way down, so I'm hoping that you can see in between the beds. This part of the end bracket right here, which I'm swigging with my fingers, goes down and it clamps on the tilt stand. You're going to use your regular plain clamps for that, the ones you would use if you were using your machine flat all the time. They came with your main bed. And you're going to put it over that bracket and over the tilt stand and tighten it up. And now that end of the river is not going anywhere. Now let me do the same thing to the other end of the river. Once again, I'm swinging down that flat part of the end bracket, and I'm taking a clamp and clamping that to my tilt stand. 
Now, I don't have the most grip strength in the world, so I often use a wooden chopstick or even a screwdriver to give me a little leverage to tighten my clamps. But that's it. Now I've got the ribber on and the main bed on, and I can slide this up into position, add my upper tension unit, add my carriages, and I can knit ribbing. Now there's a couple more things to mention. Back here behind the machine, I would just take the lid to my machine and put it back here with the top down so that it makes this wonderful big tray and I put all manner of things in there. So that is really, really handy. And I'm all set up for knitting. Now what if I'm working on my project and I decide that I really need the bed to be flat. All I have to do is loosen those two tilt knobs and I can bring the bed flat. I can also get it all the way flat. There we go, all the way flat. Tighten them back up. Now the bed is all the way flat. You can't do ribbing this way. And I'm bringing my ribber down and I'm putting those ribber covers on because if I don't, all those hooks are going to bug me. If you don't have ribber covers, you could hang a magazine or a towel over this. An open magazine can flip over this and help keep all those different sharp little things from catching on your knitting. And you can go ahead and knit. You have your machine flat. So this is really useful because that means you can store the ribber with the machine all the time. You know it's safe. It's on this super sturdy stand. And you can switch from ribbing to plain knitting as needed. Now I want to move the machine back to its normal place in my house. And I have to say that sometimes when I work, I want the ribber off. Sometimes the ribber's just in my way. So again, this is really easy. I have removed those plain clamps from the brackets on each end of the ribber. I slide the ribber out and into my lap. And then all by myself, I don't need help with this, I stand up and I put it in a safe place. Now I'm also going to take my main bed off. So I'm tilting the stand flat. And this just seems like a great opportunity to show you these round dials again. This little piece right here, this wheel, is what I need to loosen. Now I've got a jar opener from my kitchen drawer these are great to have in your knitting room for doing clamps and I need to loosen that thing so I'm going to turn it this way I have to support the machine with my other hand or it doesn't want to loosen so I loosen that then I go over to the other end I'm in a rolling chair and I loosen this one I loosen it a lot. The machine is still secure, but I'm going to pick up the machine and lift it off those and carry it to a safe place. Now just for fun, since this video is all about tilt stands, I'm going to show you how I make my tilt stand sort of portable. Now what I have here is a shotgun case from the sporting goods store. I think it cost me thirty or forty dollars and it's a fifty four inch one. It holds my tilt stand really well. I use these a lot for different machines that I need to carry around the plastic ones primarily but I also keep a tilt stand in here to take to knit club and I have a piece of duct tape on it and it's marked tilt stand. So let me open this box I like that these have a big handle on them. And I also like 
that they have all this foam padding inside. That is just what we need. So let me show you how this can go in. I'm sitting on the floor and I'm going to take my tilt stand top, put it in first, like that. It's up against these two pegs. And then I get my tilt stand legs, all four, and I nest them like this, you know, like, like cuddling, like spoons. And I'm going to put two like this, and then I'm going to put two like this, and I just fiddle with them until they get in there. Now I have to make sure I have all my parts. And you always put your big parts in first, right, with any project like this. So here goes one of my brackets, and I'll stack the other bracket here with it. And then my two little tilt wheels, just drop them in somewhere. And my very important tilt safe brackets. These tilt safes really will save you from damaging a good machine. And now, this will close. And snap shut and be really easy to carry because it's got that big handle on it. Now one more thing. I went off and got this old tilt stand top. It's really rather ancient and I have legs for it and everything else. But I just brought the top because I wanted to show you these come in two sizes and if you're one of the people who needs the tilt safe brackets, you're going to have to tell Ronnie which size you need. So, here's the size I was just using. This is one of the ones that came with modern tilt stand. And you see it's two inches deep. But these older tilt stands come in a one inch deep size. So, go look at your tilt stand before you order and make sure that you get the one inch if you need it. Now, while I've got it out, I'll just compare. Ronnie's brackets are a little prettier than my somewhat tarnished tilt stand brackets. So I was really pleased with that and she shipped them packed well. And I happen to have one of the plain clamps and of course you can use these if you're just going to clamp up flat. Now these old tilt stands didn't come with the safety bracket and I am just so grateful that Ronnie is manufacturing them. There are a few people who make things that are terribly hard for us to find for machine knitting and Ronnie is on that list now. Again, more information about the tilt safe brackets in the write-up down below the video.